unusual. And who better than Kirby Smart to be in this position, given all his experience in Tuscaloosa and having worn this number one ranking for so many weeks and years. This guy has his team practicing as physically as they practiced all season. The question is, can these 18 to 22 year olds, Aaron, can they handle this, this burden? And that is the question du jour, no question, because with this opportunity becomes a tremendous burden. I know better than anybody, in 1993, I was a senior captain at Notre Dame. We had beaten the number one Frank, uh, ranked Florida State Seminoles, only to lose the next week to a very good, scrappy Boston College team. Some similarities here, but at the end of the day, it's not how the coaches do. It's whether or not these players can shoulder the burden and responsibility that comes with being number one. And for Georgia, it begins with a run game. They have a band of horses in the backfield, including one of the SEC's all-time best duos, Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle. But Aaron, as you know, that begins with the big dogs. The big dogs up front, Sam Pippen in this offensive line have done a marvelous job improving from a year ago. A lot of teams have tried a lot of different things to stop the run game, including Florida a week ago, coming off the outside edge. But look at the wall built backside. Good movement at the point of attack. Dyshawn Sims wearing a tight end jersey. Great recognition coming up on the safety, and no big runs happen without good blocking on the perimeter, as we see Wims doing here. Georgia has one of the country's most prolific running games, and that offensive line has been key all season long, and they'll be tested today. Well, let's not forget, South Carolina doesn't have a number one next to its name, but it has been a remarkable season for the Gamecocks as well. Will Muschamp has his team doing all the little things. In the last three games, all SEC victories, zero turnovers. There's also been a recommitment to the running game. Despite losing Rico Dowdle, they have been adamant about running the football, being physical. That'll be key today. And the one thing you can know about South Carolina, guys, they have ways to win games. The, regardless of what news on the uh, schedule, North Carolina State outgained them by 250 yards. Debo Samuel said, I don't care. I'll run a kickoff back. How about against Arkansas? It's the defense's turn. Three touchdowns by the defense against the Razorbacks. And here in the checkerboards of Tennessee, a goal line stand to find victory. They're not going away easily today. Who is number one? Alabama has a chance to make another statement tonight. But on this Saturday in Athens, the Dogs are number one in the nation. Top-ranked SEC doubleheader on CBS begins with the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. The 70th meeting between the Bulldogs and the Gamecocks. South Carolina has only eight wins ever here in Athens. For more on this year's Bulldogs, here's John Schriffen. Carter, as good as Georgia has been this year, if there's one knock on this team, critics say, it's that they don't have much of a passing game. And we asked head coach Kirby Smart about that in our production meeting with him yesterday. He said, look, we don't listen to the outside voices. We know exactly how good our quarterback, Jake Fromm, is. He has made all the throws we needed him to do in practice. He just hasn't done it in game because we haven't needed him to. Our running game is just so good. Outside of his arm, the coaching staff really loves that the freshman is a leader and a winner. In fact, the last time he lost a game was in high school. He was knocked out of the playoffs against Valdosta, 28-24. That loss happened on November 4th, 2016. Carter, exactly one year ago today. Undefeated is not bad in your first year as the Georgia quarterback. Kirby Smart played safety at Georgia, coached the defense for Nick Saban at Alabama. His second year as head coach of the Bulldogs has been a breakthrough season. Will Muschamp played safety at Georgia, coached the defense for Nick Saban at Alabama. And his second year as head coach of the Gamecocks has been a breakthrough season. Sanford Stadium is ready.
at the 50. Unbelievable. We were just going to talk about uh, Will Muschamp winning the toss and a asking for the ball. You want one showing confidence in his offense. Kirby Smart showing confidence in his special teams. One of the things he raved about, Aaron. Well, we saw Caleb Kinlaw there turn his back and start running before the ball was quick kick. That's assuredly what Georgia saw and why they tried that. But that's a heck of a risk giving great field position here early on. Gamecocks need a few things to break their way. Recovering the onside kick begins the day at the 50. Jake Bentley on first and 10. Deep shot. Throws it on the outside to Edwards. He takes it inside the Georgia 35 as we look at our starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A, beginning with Jake Bentley from a football family. A major decision to make heading into his senior year of high school. Chose to graduate high school early to move with his family to Columbia, South Carolina with his dad Bobby on the Gamecock staff. And now as the sophomore, he has been terrific. Well, he has all the physical attributes. You look at him, he's 6'3", 220. When you, you look at him, you say quarterback. His dad's a coach. He's going to be one of those gym rat kind of guys. If there's one thing that gets him in trouble is that he is so good, and he thinks he can make all the big throws, sometimes forcing things into trouble. He's going to have to be careful today. Remember, no turnovers is the winning formula for the Gamecocks. He makes the big throw to Edwards to get it started. And now second and six after the Turner rush. Bentley will give to Turner again, and he's ridden down by Roquan Smith. Second tackle already as we look at the South Carolina offense, Eric. Well, keep your eye on number 25, A.J. Turner. He's a tough, slightly undersized runner with good foot speed and burst to win between the tackles. They got five yards on first down. George's defense stiffened up there. The run game is going to be critical here on the road against a very salty defensive front, and 25 has to get something going, Dave, for that to happen. Bentley on third and five. Flings it deep again, incomplete. Just missing Ortre Smith with DeAndre Baker in coverage. So fourth down coming for the Gamecocks on the opening possession. Interesting shot right there to go to the freshman receiver is obviously one-on-one -on -one coverage taking a shot down the field. We talked to Kurt Rober, the offensive coordinator. He said in this range, they were going to take some shots knowing field goals aren't going to get it done against the Georgia Bulldogs. Parker White after early struggles. He's made six of his last seven. White from 46, and it is no good. So the Gamecocks get the football at the 50. Zero points on the board. And now the number one Georgia Bulldogs with Nick Chubb and Sony Michel get the football to begin the day on offense for the Dogs. Georgia defense gets a short field and holds South Carolina scoreless and gives the football back to the offense. So starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A for the Georgia offense, beginning with Nick Fromm from beginning with Jake Fromm. <laughs> Turnover number one of the day. <laughs> Warner Robins, Georgia, recruited to Alabama. Kirby Smart and Lane Kiffin. Well, when Smart got the job at Georgia, one of his first recruiting moves was to offer Fromm. Said, I knew he dreamed of being a Bulldog. His first start for Georgia led the fourth quarter comeback win at Notre Dame. The victory that has separated the Dogs from everyone else in college football thus far. There's one running back, two tight ends set. What the Gamecocks said they didn't want to see. From all play action. He takes a deep shot. Downfield incomplete. Intended for Godwin. So, Rick, why don't you tell us about Jake Fromm? <laughs> you did that for me, didn't you? Hey, listen, the one thing that's unbelievable about this youngster who's the darling of all Georgia football fans is it's never been too big for him. His leadership, despite his youth, has been uncommon. Amazing command performance. If there's one thing he's missing, not enough experience. And certainly because they don't throw much. in the fourth quarter of that Notre Dame game. Fromm handles the high snap. Hands off. 
Short game by Nick Chubb. So let's take a look at the Georgia offense there. Well, one of the other people that Kirby Smart recruited was Sam Pittman, and he's got a great player in Isaiah Wynn, number 77. He's played all along the offensive line, but one of the leaders of this group that I think is the most improved position on this team from a year ago, and a big reason why this team is 8-0 and ranked number one in the country. Third and six, they go empty with DeAndre Swift motioning into the slot. Definitely a weapon in the pass game. From delivers complete to the outside. It's Wims who fights his way for a first down. Jake Fromm delivers a first down pass. Beautiful little concept right there. They ran uh, Swift on a corner route, got man-to-man -man, uh, coverage on him because they're expecting the throws to him. Created space outside for the hitch, Aaron. Keep a low down here. Just a nice job. Almost a clear out concept. Wims a nice player showing up, making nice plays, both catching the ball and blocking. I thought Jake Fromm couldn't throw the football. He's proved everybody wrong so far. Clings to the outside. That's Blazevich with just his second catch of the season. DJ Smith on the stop. Let's look at the game got defense. Well, keep your eye today on number three, Chris Lamonts. He's a senior, a physical defensive back that's got some versatility. Plays about 80% of the time at safety, but today he's going to be a quarterback so that he can help in run support with all of the crack blocking that Georgia likes to do on the perimeter. They wanted Lamonts out there so that he could come up and fill in run support. Swift again in the backfield. Second and three throwing again. Wims again. Georgia has a first down as the Bulldogs open up the pass game. Interesting what we're seeing here. Jim Cheney knows they're going to gang the box. Say you're not going to run it against us. So fine. We'll just take these hitches over and over again. It's been a very, very uh, executable plan for the young quarterback. Chubb in the backfield on first and ten. This is Ridley on the edge. Riley Ridley shaking his way inside the South Carolina 40. There is a flag down. There is also a Gamecock defender down. DJ Smith, a senior safety, is from Marietta, Georgia. Fromm has opened up three for four, 25 yards on the opening drive a week after he threw it only seven. Personal foul, regular the aerial circus. The way. Offense number 89, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. It's on the tight end, Charlie Werner. He was the lead blocker out there, and you'll see him coming to the right of the screen right there doing the legal chop block down the field. And you could see that D.J. Smith felt that. The officials on top of it. Penalties have been a problem for Georgia offensively. 12 against Notre Dame and had an issue here early. As a South Carolina training staff tends to DJ Smith, we step aside. It's okay that everybody. DJ Smith being helped into the injury tent on the South Carolina sideline. John will have an update if we learn more. So with the Gamecocks, without D.J. Smith for now, it is first and 20 after the penalty against Georgia. As a play caller, you're thinking here, you want to try and get a chunk of this, hopefully here on first down. First and 20 is not an easy conversion. We haven't seen Georgia run the football much. It's been all Jake Fromm's arm because of how South Carolina's approached them defensively. But with this down and distance, that box might be empty. A run call might not be a bad one here. Two rushing attempts, four passing attempts on the opening drive for Georgia. They're averaging six yards a carry on the season. So hand it off straight ahead. Heron falling forward inside the South Carolina. 40-yard line. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head right there. There was the box count. You saw two safeties. The numbers were right. Uh, Fromm gets them to the appropriate run. Obviously, a great run for the Bulldogs. And they were in man coverage there with the motion out of the backfield. It took another backer out. That play was gained because there was only five South Carolina defenders in the tackle box. Chubb in for second down. Throwing again. Complete. Godwin has it inside the 20. 
On the catch and run, Terry Godwin finally brought down by Williams and LeMans after a gain of 22. Here he is right here. He's going to run and get inside to be able to run the quick slant. This is one of Brom's best throws. Dogs go hurry up. Chubb on the edge. Wrestle down for a loss. Jamias Williams, true freshman, makes the stop. It's been interesting. We've seen both of these offenses employ some tempo. They're not necessarily hurry-up teams, but both of them, particularly down here in this end of the field, are trying to use some tempo after big plays to take advantage of and catch the defense slipping. That time, they caught me slipping on the telestrator. Constant <laughs> exchanges of personnel groupings. This is driving the defense and coaching staff crazy to make sure they know who's in the game. Pick your poison. How are you going to defend these guys? From the throw again on second down. Here's Godwin. Loses the football. Loose football. South Carolina appears to recover it inside the five. Waiting for the official word. Gamecock football as Godwin turns it over inside the five. Ken Law comes away with it, and the Gamecocks get their first big break. A Georgia turnover in the red zone. This is what we call an RPO, run pass option. The box tells him he's going to throw it. You see Godwin take the slant. Unfortunately, he doesn't put it away. A fantastic strip by Steven Montauk, the safety. And they're on it. Great job by the Gamecocks coming up with that ball in the red zone. Montak intentionally punching that ball out with his right hand. This is exactly what South Carolina wanted to do. Pause turnover, something they've been very good at all season long. And now it's up to their offense, led by Jake Bentley, to take advantage. Bentley from his own end zone. Throws again. Leaves this one high, intended for Edwards. This is how South Carolina has gone to 6-2. 62 to 3 points off turnovers on the year. Remarkable. And, and again, Will Muschamp all the credit in the world. Listen, this is a do-over, right? It didn't go well at Florida for all kinds of reasons, but he's wearing the, the responsibility on himself. And obviously this time, he's much more comfortable doing a great job. Henley hands off, second and ten. It's Williams to get just a couple, bringing up third and long against this Georgia defense. And that defense has a lot of leaders, but keep your eye on number 24, Dominic Sanders. He's a ball-hawking safety that has a chance to break Georgia's interception record. Had an interception a week ago. Among the hardest hitters on this team, even though he's a slightly built DB, here's a big third down opportunity in a backed-up situation it's important for a lot of reasons for Carolina to convert here. Third and eight. Quick hitter to the outside. Hurst has it across the 10. Hurst trying to fight for more, but he's down at the 11. Short of the line to gain. Davis finishes it off. And South Carolina will punt deep within its own territory after the takeaway. We've seen two opportunities for South Carolina to take advantage of good field position and then a turnover. Their offense hasn't been able to take advantage of it because of how good George is playing defensively. Hardman is back for the Dogs. Hardman grabs it at the 45 and he's dropped. There's a flag down. Hartman did not signal for a fair catch. Charleston comes flying in. And check the flag now. Godwin and Hartman have been returning punts, but Godwin took a pop. On that fumble, you saw him on the Georgia sideline. So Hardman back there. Third and turn, block in the back. Number nine, receiving team. Ten yard penalty. First down. Another costly penalty against Georgia. Will Muschamp's Gamecocks against Kirby Smart's Dogs, as it should be scoreless to start. Introducing Degree. South Carolina will wrap up the regular season against the Clemson 
Tigers, of course, scoreless here between the Gamecocks and number one Georgia. Harry Dogs getting into it with the spikes. So what do you expect on the second series out of the Georgia offense because they come out throwing it against the Gamecocks? I think they've kind of backed them off a little bit. I think you're going to see some uh, more traditional downhill football by the Georgia offense if Jim Chaney is who I think he is. On first and ten, Nick Chubb, huge hole left side. Chubb with blockers across the 50. Nick Chubb finally forced out of bounds after he crosses over into Carolina territory with a gain of 26. Just great job on this left side. Isaiah win and then a right, really nice job by Jeff Blazevich to create that seam inside. Then Chubb takes over with his speed to get to the perimeter. Oh, mark him out at the 43-yard line after the first big run of the Dogs today. It's Sonny Michelle in the backfield behind Jake Fromm. Fromm to Sonny Michelle. This time the Gamecocks load up, hit the hole, keep to a gain of two. Rick, you have diagnosed some keys to the upset. Well, after you get your team to believe it's possible, this is what you need to do tangibly. you got to be 40% on third down. South Carolina right now 0, 0 for 2. Win the turnover battle. They're on, a, on course for that one. And then get this game into the fourth quarter. All these red shirt people here, they'll be quiet as church mice if they can get that done. I also think they have to take advantage of some of the opportunities. you got to convert good field position and turnovers into points, and so far they haven't done so. From to Michelle, short gain on second down. Bring it up, third down on the second drive for the Dogs. They turned it over inside the 10 on the opening drive. Will Muschamp told us in the pregame, hey, look, if they throw it over our heads and beat us, we can live with that. But we are going to stop the run, and so far they're doing a nice job. Everybody stays got sound. They've got a good chance to get that done. Looking at a five-man box, but creeping in. They're going to bring some bodies in there late here. From now making a check, redirecting protections. That's going to force South Carolina to make adjustments. The chess match has begun. From on third and seven. Room on the outside. Wims makes the catch. Where is he spotted down? It's short of the line to gain. Fenton comes up to make the stop, bringing up fourth down and one. And Fromm and the offense staying on the field. Chubb will come out there for fourth down. And I love it. If I had this offensive line in that backfield, I would do it as well. Chubb's the right guy here, even though Sony Michelle runs with power. The question is, why did Wims run a short route short of the sticks, putting him in this situation in the first place? This is good on good here, boys. On fourth and one. Give it! Diving first down, Georgia. Payne picks it up. <laughs> that is Christian Payne's fourth carry of the season. This is a tendency breaker. Everybody keyed on Chubb in the backfield, and Christian Payne's fourth carry of the season moves the chains for the Bulldogs. Sony Michelle back out there for first down. Fake it. Oh, incomplete on the edge. Nice coverage out there by Jamarcus King, intended for Ridley. That was an excellent coverage by King out there on the outside edge. Jake Fromm has a lot of trust in his receivers to throw that football. He better be close. I understand why he threw it, because earlier, Rick, we've seen very soft coverage by South Carolina. But that time, they were impressed, and he almost got his hand on that When ball. you commit this many to the box, those guys are on an island. They have to be sure tacklers, which means they have to take proper angles. Does the second incompletion from Fromm, and there's a man down for the Gamecocks, that's Montac. So they've already seen DJ Smith go down in the secondary, and now Steve Montac. And while they tend to Montac, let's check in with John. Well, DJ Smith just emerged from the medical tent. He was in there being worked on for about 10 minutes. He emerged from the medical tent, and they put an ice bag on his lower back right now. He's clearly favoring his lower back. No official word from South Carolina, but his return is questionable. Guys. Well, I have to see two safeties go down on the first two drives. Well, we already saw Chris LeMond's move from safety to corner. He's playing a lot of nickel as well as, as often as George is going to their three-wide receiver package. 
But the reason is to get more physical guys because what Georgia likes to do in their run game is condense the formations, get those wide receivers to motion in close to the end of the line of scrimmage and get up on the safeties. That means we have to crack replace if you're on defense. That's what LeMond's is more physically capable of getting done. But these safeties have to stay healthy for that to keep uh, being accomplished by this Gamecock defense. So it's Charleston in the defensive backfield. Lamonts goes back to safety from corner. High snap. Fromm handles it. Sony Michelle is stood up and driven back on second down as the Gamecocks are committing big numbers to the run. Stallworth leads the attack this time. And I think Taylor Stallworth, number 90, is their best defensive lineman. Does a really nice job of staying square. Got some twitch to his hips as well. That was just mano y mano there. Credit that win and that last play to South Carolina's defensive line. That's what they need to continue to do, setting up a third and long situation here. From on third and ten. Steps up. Delivers. Deep hole with a flag down. It's incomplete. Intended for Hardman. That's Chris LeMond's in coverage. Started today at corner. Looked like there might have been some sloppy hands in the secondary right now. We'll get the call. But it looked like that route was disrupted. Officials may have thought defensive holding. Holding on the defense, number three, against the eligible receiver. Ten-yard penalty for previous spot. Automatic first down. Holding because the contact took place before the ball was in the air. And that's a critical chain extender and drive extender in a critical area. They did such a nice job, and that's why being disciplined fundamentally is so critically important. South Carolina leads the conference as the least penalized team, but that one by their team leaders down here in the red zone was a costly one. Anytime that defensive holding goes past the line of scrimmage on a forward pass, it becomes an automatic first down. Georgia first down here. LeBron's the guy said Trump couldn't throw. I was wondering when you were going to bring that mm -hmm. up. On a motions toss. Chubb on the edge. Room to run for Nick Chubb. Pounding his way inside the 15. Sky Moore finally brings him down. Tonight's Red Zone brought to you by Verizon. And the Georgia Bulldogs have been outstanding this season in the Red Zone. 71% touchdowns. Now they scored every trip, 71% touchdowns. I'll take that ratio. <laughs> I'll take it every time. That first trip was just outside the red zone for Georgia. So the turnover, even though it was inside the 10, doesn't officially count as a red zone trip, and therefore is still perfect on the season in the red zone. As Chubb takes it on second down, we'll have third, about four yards on the 15. This is the kind of down where if you're Jim Chaney, you want to know what Kirby's thinking. Hey, you want four, four downs here? You want a punch? I can run the ball here. Obviously, I trust Jake Fromm throwing the ball. We'll see what we can do in the throwing, but I need to know if I get two downs to get this done. And because of that, play action is always something the Gamecocks need to be aware of here. Doesn't look like it with the alignment of the running back, though. From third and four, zips it. Complete inside the 10. First and goal, Georgia. Ridley makes the grab. King makes the tackle. What a nice weapon to have Riley Ridley back in the lineup, a physical receiver, because this is a great play by Jamarcus King. You can't make a better jump than that, but just the physicality of the receiver allows him to make the play. And did you see Sony Michelle on that protection? He attacks <laughs> downfield. Remember, Rick, he told us in our meeting he finally takes pride in pass protection, and that was really evident on that last That's play. That's pride with a capital P. First and goal from a motion out. Wildcat to Sony Michelle. High snap. Michelle takes it. Bounces outside. Michelle with four blocking on the edge. Is and for the Georgia touchdown on the Wildcat run. From blocks for Michelle. Touchdown, Dogs. I guarantee you, Jim Chaney saw that protection on the play before and said, that young man gets a play. I'm going to find a way to get him a ball, and obviously he makes the most of it. A condensed formation there, Aaron. It certainly was. 
not what Travaris Robinson or T-Rob wanted to see. If you don't set the edge and don't have a contained player, your entire defense breaks down and the Gamecocks broke down, which gave up six points. Wagon ships PAT. We told you there was a band of horses in the backfield for this Georgia team. And Sony Michelle leads the party. Touchdown, dogs. of a special team. You're 8-0, you're 5-0 in the SEC, you're number one on one play. It's Sony Michelle with a big block, and then from blocking for Michelle on the touchdown. There's some, there's some great blocks at the point of attack, but you're going to see South Carolina get themselves inside, Rick, and what that allows, there's no contained player, so Sony Michelle tries to go up inside, but then has the time to be able to bounce it. And how about this quarterback? I know it's not a bloody your nose block, but he's making himself useful, Aaron. Don't tell me quarterbacks aren't tough. Not only is a kid a <laughs> freshman, not only is he starting in this conference, but when you got a guy under center that's willing to block, that makes everybody's job easier, funner, and just an excellent example of the mentality of how this team has become much more physical here in year two. Shai Smith is back for the game cops. Blanket shot, blanket ships kick off. Take a knee, South Carolina at the 25. The best game from the best conference in prime time. The 19th ranked LSU Tigers and Darius Guys look to spring the upset against number two undefeated Alabama tonight, 8 Eastern, right here on CBS. So both undefeated, both 8 0. Number one, number two. What's the difference right now? I think, I think it's there at the bottom. That win on the road by one point against a Notre Dame team that was ranked number three in the first college football playoff poll. You say that with great pride about your Yes, I do. Mind, we can't you? talk Notre Dame enough today. <laughs> Play fake. Fling it incomplete. Bentley intended for Smith over the middle. Jake Finley first two possessions. They had it at the midfield after recovering the onside kick. Couldn't turn that into points. And then three and out from deep in their own territory after the takeaway. Talking to Kurt Rover before the game, you know, first down was going to be critical. They had to get four and five yards on average. They've missed that opportunity right there. I guarantee you Jake Bentley wants that throw back. That should have been a hit. Bentley, who grew up in South Carolina, but finished high school, Opelika, Alabama. Second and ten, tipped, and incomplete. Third and ten against this aggressive Georgia defense. Nice job by Trenton Thompson rushing the passer, doing a nice job timing it, getting his left hand up there, which was good news for the Georgia Bulldogs as Brian Edwards was wide open. That's great play by a defensive line. Georgia found a pass rush a week ago, getting five sacks. This would be a great opportunity for them to pin their ears back and try and come after number 19. And here they come on third and ten. Bentley converts across the 40-yard line. Or Trey Smith, the true freshman, makes the tough grab. Read on the stop, gain of 15. Nothing like having a physical kid as a freshman. 6'4, 220 pounds. Or Trey Smith right here coming across the middle. You know, lots of concern about youngsters. Are they ready for the physicality of the game? No concern on this youngster's part. He makes big plays in the traffic. So the Gamecocks convert on third and ten. A.J. Turner in the backfield. They feed Turner on the right side. He's stood up by Lorenzo Carter and driven back as the Bulldog defense rallies to the football. It's a really nice job by the left side of that defensive front. That was over Zach Bailey, the right tackle, Lorenzo Carter. Been a long-time player here, long, lean, athletic, built like a power forward. Coaches wanted him to be a little bit more physical. He certainly was on that last play, as we say, D.J. Smith, their starting safety.
With a minute left in the first quarter, Bentley trying the deep hole incomplete. It was intended for A.J. Turner out of the backfield and a missed opportunity to hit Georgia over the top rim. Great opportunity. Listen, we talked about explosive plays. You have to have explosive plays if you're going to upend the number one team in the country. It was well designed. A.J. Turner out of the backfield, running with the flat defender. Not in position to make a play, but the ball is just slightly overthrown. Again, the excitement of this kind of crowd for a youngster. This quarterback's only 19 years old. Set has got to settle down and make those throws. Third down again. Converted on the last one. Bentley steps up. Delivers again. Converting again. This time, it's Hayden Hurst. Aaron Davis makes the stop. Back-to-back -back conversions on third and long. This one goes for 20. You know what's wonderful to see about a youngster like Jake Bentley? We talked, Kurt Rober mentioned this. He's, he's got a quick, uh, he remembers everything. You don't need a chalkboard to draw up plays for him. But what he also does is he forgets mistakes. He's ready to go on to the next play. You can see a beautiful route here. Aaron Davis not ready to get jump on that break, that out cut. And the tight end makes the big play. Bentley's going to hand off. This is Mon Denson. And Denson gets just a couple. And it's Jonathan Ledbetter who leads the attack along with J.R. Reed with 12 seconds left in the quarter. Aaron, you can't be uh, frustrated with those kind of offensive plays if you're South Carolina right now. A four-yard gain right now is a good play. When you're on the road, patience is prudence. So 7 nothing Georgia on South Carolina at the end of the first quarter. The number one dogs, not perfect to start, but they have the 7 nothing lead. Full header, 7 nothing Georgia. Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, and now thousands and thousands of residents are leaving. Where are they going? Plus, a child prodigy you have to see and hear to believe. 60 minutes tomorrow. Second down for Bentley in the Gamecocks play action. Bentley zips it complete inside the 25-yard line. That is Ortre Smith who makes the grab in front of Baker. Ortre Smith was the player that they took the deep shot to open the ball game on. This is a little 18 on 18 prime. Credit this offensive line for South Carolina for giving Jake Bentley time to throw and some really nice route running starting to emerge from this tall, young, athletic wide receiver core for the Gamecocks. It's 6-4 on 5-11 is what it is. First time in the red zone for Bentley and the Gamecocks. Bobble, Bentley throws anyway, and it's complete to Edwards. Let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio with a Ford update. Hey, Carter, Stanford's Bryce Love is back. We saw how badly they missed him last week against Oregon State. Right here, tying an FBS record with his 10th carry of 50 yards or more. It's a touchdown. Back to you. Bentley's second and three going for a touchdown here, and it is incomplete. Looking for Edwards in double coverage. It'll be third and three. Brian Edwards is trying to get the attention of his coaching staff saying, I coached, I caught that coach. Take another look. I'll say with my naked eye, it looked like he caught the ball too. Whether or not it was moving and he had possession and never touched the ground, but did he have possession while he had a foot down? This may be worth a second look. That looks like a catch. We'll see if Ron Leatherwood, our replay official, wants to have another look at it. Hasn't stopped it yet. And now just Whoa. before the snap. Field wow. the field was the incomplete master pass. Of suspense. Previous play is under review. Mm. It was <laughs> interesting there, boys. At the very end, the ball was on the ground. Whether or not Edwards had possession of that football, it was wiggly early, but as he started to fall to the ground, it looked like he was able to haul this ball in. It's moving there. He gets his hands underneath it. He certainly got body parts in. 
there doesn't look to be any jostling of the ball. It looks like he's completed the catch with his body in the end zone. I think where he has possession of the football is when his left elbow comes down to the ground after he spins. Keep your eye right there. I think that elbow's in and he has possession of the football. Rulebook says a slight movement of the ball, even if it touches the ground, will not be considered loss of possession. Must lose control of the ball in order for there to be loss of possession. So even though even though it's, it's I, jiggling a little bit, it looks to me like all the elements there. You know, this is one of the things as a head coach, you're always you're always kind of asking yourself. That play almost looked like it was going to get run, right? Yep. And it, you only get a challenge as a head coach. You're sitting there, do I call this? After further review, they're supposed to know. The ball was caught in the end zone for a touchdown. King Cup touchdown. Edwards holds it in. South Carolina is on the board. You talk about one of the great throws in college football in any level of football right now. It's the back shoulder throw. That was beautifully executed by both quarterback and receiver. Parker White for the PAT, and it sneaks in there. Seven all. On the second touchdown catch of the year by Brian Edwards, the Gamecocks into the end zone, even 7-7 in Athens. Drive put together by Bentley and the Gamecocks, two big third down conversions. We talked early in the game about the importance of converting on third down at a high rate. They're now two for four for the game. Hardman is back, lets it sail out, touchback. They'll have it at the 25-yard line. So 7-7, seven, seven, early second, time now for our trivia question. Who holds the record for most rushing yards in a season by a Georgia senior? Oh. There is an op there's <laughs> there, there, there was a guy who was on that 82 team and last time they were one in Fortunately, November. he didn't play as a senior because he would have played against uh -huh. my UCLA team. Oh, we, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to that game later, guaranteed. Oh, stop. We will get to that one later. Did they even Swift. film back then? That was yeah, it was. <laughs> it's grainy, but we've got it. And Zapruder was on the camera. <laughs> From will hand off Harrion. It's just about four yards as the Bulldogs get back to the run game. Sky Moore on the stop. And I think that's expected now from this offense for Georgia. Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, knowing that he wants to establish the line of scrimmage. The recipe that's worked for these guys passing early had been that short passing game. But remember, Jake Fromm does a nice job of taking advantage of play action down the field. I would expect Georgia to take a shot here shortly. See when Jim Cheney decides to make a bleed, as he says, going over the top. It's Chuck straight ahead. Of course, that's not a bad option either to set you up for third and short. Never a bad option to give the ball to number 27. What a great, great athlete. What a remarkable comeback from his uh, devastating injury a couple of years ago in Knoxville. You just love stories like this. Guys coming back and having the kind of success that he's enjoying and persevering as he has. Fully healthy and fresh, and because of all of the back options that Georgia has, they've been able to keep Nick Chubb fresh. Sonny Michelle's more of a true back because freshman DeAndre Swift is more that slot player. So here's from, there's a toss, there is DeAndre Swift, and the true freshman from Philly picks up the first down for the Dogs. DeAndre Swift was impressive when I was at yeah, practice on Swift. Thursday. The coaches were impressed by him, too, guys. Talked about right when he showed up on campus, ran routes almost as well as a lot of the wide receivers. What that's allowed is for Sony Michelle to take more of a traditional running back role, which means you have Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle coming fresh off the bench, getting about 16 to 20 carries per game. It's been a deadly combination. Averaging eight yards per rush, eight and a half yards per touch. And the outside hard with another weapon that converted DB. Pecking his way with wins, blocking on the edge. Hardman running top. And the Bulldogs sideline, and the Bulldog fans love it. Gain of 11.
North Carolina is daring Georgia to throw the ball. They are ganging up on that box. You are not going to beat us with the running game. And there's just so much air out there. Jake Fromm takes advantage of it. And this is that play action that we talked about. It's just basically a perimeter run by getting the football into Hardman's hands right away. Wims initially misses his block, but he gets back up, stays alive just enough to get the first down. Fromm fakes it to Michelle. To the ear again on play action. Nata on the edge. Isaac Nata, who's not been a huge weapon in his sophomore year, but they find him here, Rick. In this personnel grouping, you're going to get a lot of single high, which is going to give you an opportunity to have what we call levels patterns outside. The outside receiver will clear, taking the corner with him. And look at number two, the tight end. He runs the corner route into the vacated area, and Fromm finds him. It's a gain of 17 from now, 9 for 11 passing. Already more pass attempts in this first half than he had in Jacksonville against the Gators. And Michelle breaks it almost all the way. Wrestled down by Brunson from behind. This is just an inside zone cut where you do zone blocking at the point of attack, bring the tight end across. They're controlling this line of scrimmage nicely. Give it to Michelle again. He gets just enough for a first down. Move the chains. Sawyer on the stop. It's really interesting that Georgia's starting to use some tempo as well. Neither of these teams, again, are hurry up, but they're using it effectively. As these drives grow longer, it wears more on South Carolina than Georgia. They do not have the same amount of depth defensively as the Georgia Bulldogs enjoy. So the veteran offensive coordinator, Jim Cheney, second season here with Dogs on motion, Swift out. Fromm takes it. Fromm on the draw inside the 20. Fromm spinning away. A tough run from Fromm to move the chains again. Stallworth finally finishes it off. Another Gamecock defender is down. What you saw the Gamecocks do there was take their linebackers and dislocate them to bring some edge pressure off the outside. And that's what opened it up. You'll see the middle of the Red Sea parting right here as these guys come off the outside. This is a perfect look for Fromm to take advantage of. Great call and execution. And then it's poor tackling by Montak, of course, ending, unfortunately, with the injury to number 90, Taylor Stallworth, their defensive lineman, who did great hustle there but is now being tended to on the sideline. And with Stallworth down on the sideline, you step away. Seven all Georgia driving Taylor Stallworth the big man in the middle for Bill Muschamp's defense is in the injury tent and we have seen Montag go down and come back we've seen DJ Smith head to the locker room and now Stallworth in the tent on that South Carolina sideline Georgia has another first down just outside the tent the first Georgia possession officially was a red zone trip where Godwin ends up fumbling the football. So, so the streak is coming. That is in. right. That's right. So that was uh, cleaned up a little bit by our official stats crew. One for two in the red zone tonight. Will Muschamp and defensive coordinator Tavares Robinson can ill afford losing guys in that defensive front. One for two in the red zone today. This is the ninth play of the Georgia drive. Each Georgia possession has been a drive of at least nine plays today. And they're doing a nice job, as Rick alluded to early, of giving those body blows. Georgia doesn't have, excuse me, South Carolina doesn't have the depth. This is going to add up to the second half. Bomb hands off to Swift. He is pushed back after a gain of one by a uh, bunch of South Carolina defenders, including Brunson and Wanham. Again, this South Carolina defense is just daring Jake Fromm to take these wide receivers. The, wide, the DBs are probably eight yards off, and we're sitting here inside the 10-yard line. It's hard to imagine giving that kind of cushion to athletes like Godwin and Wim. And again, this is why I think South Carolina has to be aware of play action. They're responding to the run so much that could leave them susceptible of defending the pass. On second and nine, there's the play action. Fromm flings just incomplete. Wims couldn't haul it in. Takes a dive into the hedges with Fenton in coverage. 
obviously a great attempt here, but I think they made this harder than they needed to. They kind of ran into the coverage and made it a more difficult uh, throw for Fromm. We'll take a look. That's uh, it's awful close. Looked as if it uh, was, had slid out of bounds before he wrestled control of the ball. But uh, again, really soft coverage given where they are on the field. This is third and nine. There we go. Yep. <laughs> All right, take a look at this one too. Field was an incomplete pass. Previous play is under review. What do they say about the eye in the sky, Aaron? It don't lie. <laughs> So South Carolina got its touchdown on an incompletion reversal for Edwards. And now Wims will hope for the same. Wow. That was a really nice job of laying out. It looked like his left toe might have been just, just short of the line. Hard to see right there. But an incredible effort nonetheless by Wims to go get that football. I think that that's going to be called the touchdown. An old, I'm an old offense guy. That's a touch. That is a touchdown. <laughs> I can understand where you'd say that's hard to re re reverse, given where the toe grabs and where the ball actually gets wrestled into control. But as an offensive guy, I'm calling TD. And then Wims controls it going down. Even with everybody lined up on the sideline in front of the hedges, Wims manages to control that going to the ground as well. What ride receivers have the wherewithal with two hands on it to then move it to your outside hand, which Wims does there. You don't do that if you're not surely in possession of that football. As he starts to come down, that's always an indicator to me that there's a high chance of probability that he has possession or at least feels like he does as a receiver. Is it a shock to you fellas that this Georgia crowd is agreeing with me right here as they look <laughs> at this replay on the scoreboard? Uh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So we'll I, see if they get their wish. And I agree with you on the play call, Rick. I'd love to see a boot or a naked get from outside and bring the tight ends over the top. They got a nice big group of these guys that are tall. That would really bring those linebackers up and clear out the space needed to get those tight ends from behind. Here's a call. After further review, the ball was caught in the end zone for a touchdown. Instant replay is the wide receiver's best friend today between the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs. One for Wims after Edwards had one for the Gamecocks. Overturned from incomplete into a touchdown. Not only does the eye in the sky not lie, Aaron, it likes the offense. <laughs> Today it certainly does. Blankenship boots it through. The PAT is good. Georgia 14-7. Fromm is now 10 for 12, passing. It's a touchdown, after all, for the Dolls. On. And now, do Project Smarter, presented by Home Depot. Fromm and the Dog last week against the Gators. And this is the one that kind of breaks down. I mean, with Michelle breaks off the route, Fromm throws it anyway, ends up in the pit. And talking to the coaching staff, that was as much on the running back as it was on anybody. This time, he looks at what he wants. He sees that one-on-one. -on -one. If you're even, you're leaving. Great job of Wims going up and getting that touchdown. Very similar look. Puts the ball where only his guy can get it. And great concentration dragging that left toe for another touchdown. Rick, this has been a clinic on quarterback play today. Both these kids, listen, they're both 19 years old, right? They're just whippersnappers. They both came in with 13 touchdowns passes only four interceptions and they are putting on a show in a game where we thought it was going to be a slugfest in the trenches the coaches are saying why are we beating our heads against the wall let's get the ball outside and in his back he'll hit a knee touch back to the 25 so south Carolina on his last drive they go 10 plays, 75 yards, touchdown with a couple of big third down diversions. Hitting their big tight end, Hayden Hurst, and then Ortre Smith, the freshman, doing a nice job. But the story's really been Jake Bentley as we see Edwards off balance, really using some great body control to the chagrin, or to actually to the enjoyment, rather, of Will Muschamp. 19's been pretty special today, which is what you need on the road. The running game hasn't quite been what I think it's going to need to be to keep Georgia honest as they start to load the box themselves and play a little bit more aggressive. Bentley play action. So Jake Bentley chased and dropped in the 15-yard line. Roquan 
the chef, Smith. <laughs> Roquan Smith. He's the highlight show of this defense. I mean, it's, a, it's laden with talent, but Roquan Smith is the fastest player on this defense. No one wants to race him. Watch how he gets to the quarterback here. It's the recognition and the delay that allows that to be successful. Nobody had him in responsibility. A.J. Turner, free release. They've got to keep somebody dedicated to the middle linebacker. That's just a gotcha and heads-up play by number three setting up a really advantageous second and long situation. Bentley quick hitter outside. Into the hand of Edwards again. Wrestled down by Davis as soon as he grabs it at the 20. Good play right there by the quarterback. Taking what they give you. Get this into third and at least reasonable. Still a third and long situation, but you cannot uh, put yourself in harm's way by leaving at third and 20. Bentley has completed his last five passes. Two big third down conversions on the touchdown drive. Now staring into third and 15. Looking like one-on-one -on -one coverage down here by their big Ortre Smith. Wouldn't be surprised to see an opportunity outside here to the left. Baker's going to bail out, though. He's going to use his eyeballs. Bentley going to look that way anyway. Another big one to Hurst. Third down conversion again. Hayden Hurst finally shoved out by Baker. South Carolina a week ago was exceptional on first down. Now it's just Hayden Hurst, one of their go-to weapons, coming free on third down. South Carolina doing a beautiful job of finding the open receivers in the hole in this Georgia defense. Remember, fellas, that struggled mightily in that game against Missouri. This is a scrappy team that feels like it can win the game. Georgia's defense needs to buckle down a little bit. Bentley said it's not going to take a miracle. On the run, pressured again. And now he will dive back near the line of scrimmage with Smith and Carter in pursuit as we check in with John. Well, guys, Hayden Hurst was saying he was very superstitious in high school because he played baseball. He had rituals before all of his games. Well, when he skipped college to play professional baseball, he said all those rituals stopped because he wasn't very good. He said that forced him to grow up fast. Now that he is in college, he said he has a second chance on life. He said he doesn't take any moment for granted because he's back playing a game he loves. Guys. And in an understatement, he said minor league baseball, not what it's cracked up to be. Turner on the edge. He eats a whole lot better in the SEC playing for the Gamecocks than he did in minor league ball. He certainly did. And that's a really good example as we take another look here of Hayden Hurst, who I think impresses me the most with his ability to run after the catch. Only three catches, but 59 yards. Once he gets that ball in his hands, he has demonstrated an ability to get north and south, and that's proved to be very, very beneficial. Gamecocks have converted three times on third and long. Now they have third and four. Dog showing a little pressure here. It's picked up. So Bentley going to dump it off. Hurst! Hurst eludes the first man, but he still dropped at the 40. Sanders finally. A phenomenal play by Dominic Sanders, one of their glue guys, as, as uh, Mel Tucker talks about the leaders on this team. Getting off his block, making a play, keeping the Gamecocks from making the first down. Fourth and five, and Bentley mm, just now is headed to the sideline. So from the 40, we will see the hunt unit come on with Joseph Charlton. It's a little bit of a conservative play call there. And keep your eye on Hayden Hurst. He seems to be a little bit banged up a little bit, not feeling good. That's something to keep an eye on because of how good of a playmaker he is for this offense. I'll take the delay again, back him up. Play of game, offense, the 20. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Yeah, you see him limping off there as South Carolina takes a penalty to give themselves a little bit more room, but it's been a day of injuries early here in the first half of the Gamecocks. Oftentimes, coaches decline that penalty, making it easier to knock it in the end zone, but when it's less than five yards, you're more inclined to do it in case someone jumps off sides. Hardman back for Georgia on fourth down. Hardman gets it away at the 45. Hardman calls for the fair catch, backs up to the eight-yard line to grab it. The Bulldog defense gets the football back with a touchdown lead.
still undefeated. Georgia at 8-0, number one in the country, 14-7 on South Carolina. Time to answer our Aflac trivia question. A record for most rushing yards in a season by a Georgia senior. Herschel didn't stick around for his senior year. Willie McClendon with 1,312 rushing yards in 1978. Most ever by a Bulldog senior. The 1978 SEC Player of the Year. Great name in Georgia history, Willie McClendon. And Nick Chubb was 796. And that kind of surprises you at 796 because his numbers could be bigger, but because they have so many options. They got five guys back there. If they were a <laughs> basketball team, they'd whip everybody. Chubb second on the list right now to Herschel Walker. He will take it on first and ten. Nick Chubb on the right side. Nothing much there. Dante Sawyer makes the stop. I've been impressed with South Carolina today on some of these first down plays where they're holding the point of attack and doing a nice job against an offense. It's kind of being bullheaded at times, trying to run the football up inside. There's some cat and mouse going on. Jim Chaney's a brilliant offensive coordinator. He's going to set some things up. But when you're in a backed up situation like this, you cannot afford a turnover. So you understand the conservative play call. Smith and Montag both in the game again for South Carolina. To the outside, wins. Makes the first defender miss, and he's shown down in the 25 by Williams. This is the question Tavares Robinson has to ask himself. Am I going to play my corners off and so I can get that run-stopping stuff and give up these hitches? The problem with that is they've given up two nine-play drives the last two times down the field. They're going to have to get up in the face, take that throw away, and play what we call bail technique. And that's one of their better cover corners, Chris Lamonts, both in coverage and on the missed tackles. We took a look at T-Rob there. First and ten, Michelle has the corner. Michelle tripped up. Lamonts makes the stop. From 11 for 13 passing in this game. He's going to have to go get his arm, arm iced. <laughs> I mean, shoot, 13 throws. He, in six of his eight games thus far, 15 attempts or less. Hmm. Coaches told us is that, of course, he's a freshman. He's going to make a mistake. But when he does, they're honest mistakes. They're ones that we can live with. High backfield. Michelle on the right side to get a couple more. You have third and two. Jones on the stop on Sony Michelle. Again, trying to get your defense off the field. You get into these situations, you're going to do a little bit more selling out. Look for some extra pressure on this particular down and definitely ganging up the box. And you can't give up the hitch outside. You'll see corners get up a little closer in those receivers' faces. Three for four so far on third down. It's not to going in motion. Michelle's in the backfield with Fromm. Bobble, Michelle manages to grab it. Has a first down and delivers a blow as he gets to the 45. Williams and Montag on a gain of 12. We open this game today showing Florida coming off the outside edge trying to be able to bring some pressure off that outside. This is exactly what they do there. The defensive end completely misses Sony Michelle. A bad defensive run fit results in a first down for the Bulldogs. The ultimate equalizer is the quarterback in the run game. He, in effect, became a blocker there. Cromwell hand to Swift. Shoving on the edge with Godwin blocking for him on the edge to get to the 49. And what's interesting here, this is a talented, true freshman that the coaches are extremely high on. And again, it allows the depth of your running backs to take precedence because of what it is they're allowed to do. Look at the disparity in rushing yards. That's going to show up in the second half where Georgia gets the football. They've got three timeouts, 2.10 to go. They are taking their sweet time trying to get a score maybe going in and coming out. With two minutes left in the half, Frog pumps on the roll. He loads up and lets it fly all the way. Knocked away by King and 
intended for Ridley. I mean, from load it up and let it fly. An excellent job by Jamarcus King right there, staying in the moment, staying, keeping his eyes on his receiver. Riley Ridley had all kinds of time because from it had gotten out of the pocket, extended the play. But King, rather than going in there and trying to get nervous and play with his hands, grabbing at the receiver, made a play on the ball. That's what that's that's called being a senior right there. That was that was the difference in the play. King stayed alive on that play, and it looked like Ridley shut it down a little bit. Third and six from the gun. From chased. From will take the sack as South Carolina gets to the QB. DJ one of the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, who said I was a Georgia fan growing up, but I plan on getting after the dogs today. Georgia's had under 10 sacks. This is just going to be a stunt, which is an exchange of responsibilities by the offensive line. You have to keep your shoulders square, not let somebody get to your hip. The integrity of the pocket breaks down. A great job of the Gamecocks getting themselves off the field on third down here. No timeout, so the clock is still running, giving South Carolina not much time, and the dogs are happy to lead it down I even think, more. I think Will Muschamp realizes the field position here, given that the close happened against the 42 yard line, is likely to be backed inside his own 20. And in fact, they'll have it right at the 20. And decided and decided that, hey, let this clock run out so we don't we don't have to worry about it at the other end because Georgia still has all three timeouts. Coming up, stay tuned for the Geico Halftime Report. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, and Les Miles. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that, man. Here's the deal. Coming into this game, we talked with Kirby Smart. We sat in his office, guys, yesterday. He looked tense. He was having to do things that he doesn't normally have to do. We talked about the fact that he was going to be okay, but would his players respond? Well, they're up by seven, but this is a tight game. The question is, in the second half, does Georgia start to play tighter when the stakes increase? That's going to be something to keep our eye on here in the second half. So, Rick, do you think the Gamecocks go for it here, or are you, you okay trying to get to the locker room in a seven-point game? Given where they are in the field, I think they're going to try to get this game into the locker room at halftime down seven. Again, one of the things we talked about about that upset, get to the fourth quarter with one score. This crowd will start feel that nervous trepidation. Holy cow, we're number one. Are we going to give this up? That sort of nervous anxiety can spread to the field. So 30 seconds. Nobody's taken a timeout yet. Bentley steps up, completes. That's Edwards picking up a critical first down for Excellent South Carolina. Excellent play call here by Kurt Roper. He knows that George has got two timeouts. I cannot sit and put my, my guns back in the holster. I've got to get this thing into the game, into the locker room. Here it's going to be that case. Still three timeouts, both sides. So Bentley stepping up. He's in as he throws. It's downfield and it's picked off. Reed has it for the Dogs. Five seconds, four seconds at the 44-yard line. So they take a shot. It ends up in the pick for Reed. And now the Bulldogs will have one more crack at it before halftime. When South Carolina didn't take a timeout, I thought they were going to be conservative, but it was that pressure off that outside edge by DeAndre Walker that has a duck. This is three flies up. Reed plays center field, and now he's eating greedy with a chance for Georgia to probably have to take a shot at the end zone. They don't want to risk trying to run a play to get a little bit closer, but I'm confused there with the play calling. On first down, you run the football to be conservative, then you start throwing it? That doesn't add up. There is an opportunity with four seconds left to throw it out into the boundary if they'll give it to you and get this thing maybe to the 35-yard line for a 52-yard field goal. I've practiced this many South times. Carolina. South Carolina has a timeout. So with four seconds, Georgia has a shot and to the touchdown lead before the half. Together, we Rodrigo Blankenship, one of college football's best kickers. Rick, you think they might give him a shot? And I'm watching Will Muschamp bring his DP up there knowing what I know, that you can get an out thrown and still get under four seconds on the clock. You can see right there Chris Le LeMans into the boundary right there, going to get in the face. They are going to try to take away that boundary out 
to give this opportunity. Now to the field, much more difficult. And now another timeout. Making sure everything is set up. Uh, do you think Will Muschamp was happy with the way everybody lined up there for the Gamecocks? Well, they had trips so. to the top of the field on South Carolina's side, indicating that it was going to be a Hail Mary. But to Rick's point, they had single coverage with extreme off coverage. That would have been an easy throw to the right. Take a look at all this space right here. This is the throw that Rick's talking about that was absolutely there, which is why South Carolina took the timeout. Another timeout is called. Right now, if I'm up in the box with Jim Chaney, I'm going to throw a slant to the field. This ball's going to be caught. He's going to slide. He's not going to try to run with it. And we've got three timeouts. You can call one, and I promise you, you'll still be inside of four seconds. Don't run a slant with four <laughs> seconds left in the middle of the field. You run an out. You, it's got to go perfect. Aaron, trust me, if you slide and catch it and call timeout, you alert the officials as to what you're going to do, you can get this done. We shall see how it ends up in the chess match with a couple of timeouts in positioning. Well, we know Fromm has the arm. That's not a question. If they choose to throw it deep. Four seconds. Trips into the boundary. There they've taken away the out, which is the job. Now they've got somebody in the face of the receiver to the field. This is going to be a Hail Mary shot at the end zone. And here's Fromm backing up, stepping up. From the 46, Fromm lets it fly, and it is incomplete. They had a shot, whims in the end zone, 14-7 at the half for John Shrippens. Halftime interview with Coach Smart. Go to Twitter, at SEC on CBS. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio. Oh. Getting set for the second half in Athens. Safe to say Georgia has won the rushing battle, 124 to 11. Both teams have one turnover. We have a touchdown game at the half. Carter Blackburn, Rick Neuheisel, Aaron Taylor, John Schriffen on the sideline. Rick, you said South Carolina wanted to get it to the fourth in a one-score game. They're to halftime in a one-score game. If you're game. Will Muschamp right now, you're elated. Your team is fighting hard. You're within one score. You're doing what you need to do on third down, three of six. But the one adjustment you're going to have to make is you're going to have to get your corners up there. You cannot give those easy yards if you're going to stay alive. And it's 19 minutes of possession time. That's too much for his defensive line. Georgia's doing great offensively. Stay patient there. Protect the football defensively. They have to do a better better job on third down. Bentley's doing a masterful job. It's been third and eight, but he's finding ways to extend drives. So 14-7 for the Georgia Bulldogs, trying to get to 9-0 for the first time since 1982. It will be a touchback to begin. Let's check in with John Schrippen. Well, I had a chance to talk to both coaches. Let's first start with George's Kirby Smart. I asked him, what was the onside kick to start the game? He said, that was to send a message. We are going to be aggressive here today. And you can already see that with Jake Fromm. 11 of 14 throwing the ball. They've made a very consistent effort to throw the ball. He said, we need to work on extending our drives and finishing on third down, converting some more third downs. As for South Carolina, Will Muschamp, he is dialed in right now. I asked him what he told his team at the half. He gave me two words. Go finish, guys. A chance to win a game in Athens as a head coach for the first time. For the Gators, they played in Jacksonville last year, first year with the Gamecocks, was in Columbia. Chubb, first down carry. He takes a pop from T.J. Brunson. But gets another solid gain on first down, 18. And I think that this has to be the plan for Georgia. We talked about it just as we came on the air. Stay patient. They're averaging five yards per carry. But they held the ball for 18 minutes in that first half, 40 plays. Those are body blows to a South Carolina defense that doesn't have the depth. Look at this formation here, though. This is called unbalanced, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbo on second and six from your own 28. Jake Fromm, toss, weak, Michelle, first down across the 35. 
Wrestled down by Le Mans. Just a little jab step by Sony Michelle in the backfield. What's commonly referred to as a belly flip. You're taking steps as if you're going to run the ball to the right, and the quarterback then flips it out with a little reverse pitch back to Michelle. You letting him use his speed to impact the outside, the edge of the defense. Obviously, he sees a crease up inside. A nice job by the tight end, Charlie Warner there, number 89, accelerating his feet on contact to give that chance of play. Or the other way. Palm hands off Michelle. And we knew it was wrestled down by Kenlaw. <laughs> A lot of nickel, a lot of nickel personnel groups by Georgia still to run the ball just to see if they can soften up the defense. Right there, there were six in the box. The numbers were still in the favor of South Carolina right there, unless Fromm becomes a run threat. And, and I'm glad you brought that up, Rick, because what I'm noticing nationwide, and particularly with Georgia, they're running out of 11 personnel, which is one running back tight end, three wide receivers. It's basically a nickel look. That clears out the box and makes the big guy's job up front that much easier because it's virtually empty. And Cheney says these guys make it easy on me. Just dial up anything and they're going to block it and run it. And here's Chubb on the edge. Chubb diving forward. Brunson gets in there just a little bit late. No flag. Sky Moore in on the tackle. A beautiful job of just staying in the gap, setting an edge, making the running back come back inside. The number one fundamental of a defensive football team is knowing where your help is. They did a nice job there. Yes, George is going to get some yards. Those are outstanding backs and a great offensive line. But doing the job you do to get him into as many third downs as possible. Sky Moore, number 10, the linebacker, doing a nice job scraping down the line of scrimmage there to make the tackle. Brown makes an adjustment prior to third and four. Out of the cup, from flings complete on the edge. Michelle stays in bounds, first down and more. Sonny Michelle to the South Carolina 42 before Smith finally brings down Michelle. This is a man pressure, and you can see the inside linebacker who's got Sonny Michelle in man to man coverage does not stay with his man. He gets picked off right there, and Michelle definitely out leverages him and obviously him in space is not the recipe that South Carolina wants. The way you beat man coverage is to isolate or cross. That time they crossed, it was a rub route which freed Michelle wide open. Great play call and execution by the Bulldogs. You can ask the Gators about Sony Michelle in the open field. It's DeAndre Swift on the edge. Swift is wrestled down by Brunson as the Bulldogs Share the wealth on the opening drive of the second half. Really nice job that time by Andrew Thomas, the true freshman right tackle. That's a wide reach for him to come outside. He's got that left hand outside, but he keeps his legs going, nose good enough to let go. That is an outside play into the boundary, which is the short side of the field. Swift is happily named because he hit the corner and was gone. And now it's Chubb back in for second and two. Rob gives it to him. Big hole on the left side this time. Chubb keeps it rolling, and he takes it inside the 30. We'll see where the forward progress has him stopped right around the 26. This is just power running up inside. Rick and I were just waxing poetically how they're running out of wide receiver, three wide receiver sets and nickel. Now they're playing big boy football with two tight ends up there. And this was exactly what Tavares Robinson did not want to see. He would rather play against all those wideouts. When they go big boy, this is where it's hard for the Gamecocks to hold up. Seven plays on the drive against the Gamecock defense, only one pass. Run it again, first and ten. This time Chubb is stood up by Ulrich Jones, the fifth-year senior from Oxford, Alabama. Great job inside by the Gamecocks right here. Ulrich Jones getting his snaps. Here comes Javon Kinlaw back into the game. Again, this is the kind of thing that's a recipe for disaster if you're a Gamecock fan because you cannot stay on the field for this many snaps. They're going to have to take more chances on third down. And Ken lost 326 pounds and got the start today as a result. They wanted him to play 35 or 40 plays because they felt like it would give him a better shot up front as we're probably going to have a procedural penalty here. Ball start, offense number one, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Rare mistake by the veteran Sony Michelle. Eight plays on this drive for Georgia. Every Bulldog offensive possession has been eight plays or more, except the one with four seconds before the half. 
and that again is wears on those guys wearing the big shoulder pads up front for the Gamecocks. They're doing an outstanding job. It's one of the reasons I said we're going to have to clamp down outside with the corners and take away those hitches. But these guys are doing a yeoman's job inside holding up against this outstanding Georgia front. Jake Fromm on the outside. Hardman with Wims blocking for him ahead. Hardman finally pushed out by Montac, third and manageable. I've been impressed with Prom's ability to be able to throw the football there. That location, though, Rick, was a little bit behind him, and it forced Hardman to be able to turn around. You want to be able to hit him in stride there so he can keep his face and shoulders square for the defense. But again, good perimeter blocking that time by Wims. And they got a very third makeable third down here. Well, Muschamp calling for a hold, no flag. Third and four. Big down right here. Big down for the Gamecocks. Out of the cut. From Flings. Hard for the kid. End zone. Caught. Touchdown. On the big third and four. It's from to me, Cole Hardman for the Georgia touchdown. Jake from State Prom, he does it again. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful, beautiful back shoulder throw. We've been talking about this ability, and listen, you're playing with a freshman. Jim Chaney's gonna try to give him as many easy throws as he can get. He takes the outside half of the red jersey, puts it in a place where only number four can make the catch. Just outstanding job, pirouetting to make the catch. Rodrigo Blankenship, for the PAT. Miko Hardman from DB to wide receiver all over the field for the Bulldogs, but Hardman holds it in. A critical conversion. 21 7, Georgia. That dog, he'll bat you. Uh, Georgia wanted to run the football, wear down the South Carolina defense, and put it in the end zone. One score game at the half, but the first drive of the second half, Jim Cheney's offense executes to perfection. Just a beautiful job of mixed play calling, but focusing on the run. Another 10-play drive. That's exactly what it is you want to do. And they had a situation at the end of the Notre Dame game where Godwin went up and made a heck of a catch, Rick. I've been impressed with these young wide receivers. It's unbelievable how well they do it on this play. It's obviously a play. We talked to Kirby Smart about how you get this guy his passing reps, given that they haven't thrown so many passes in so many games this year. They just make sure that a, a priority is team pass and practice, and it's at full speed. Like it chips kick off, trickles, or a touchback as we check in with John Shriffen. Carter, confident on the field and in the classroom. Here are today's scholar athletes pre presented by Quicken Loans. South Carolina's DJ Owanam, a GPA of 3.33, majoring in sports and entertainment management. And for Georgia, Roquan Smith, GPA of just over three and majoring in economics. Quicken Loans' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to South Carolina and Georgia's general scholarship fund. And Roquan Smith had a busy week this week. He also was volunteering with the Special Olympics. He was one of 46 Georgia student athletes volunteering to help walk the kids down the red carpet on Thursday night. And there is Smith on the tackle. How about when defensive coordinator Mel Tucker said in 10 years in the NFL, never had a faster linebacker than Roquan Smith at Georgia. We couldn't even get him to pick out a guy on defense that would race him. So <laughs> this guy says, I'll race anybody. I'll race anybody. When I asked him what his 40 time was, he said, well, in high school, it was 4-4. <laughs> Almost went to UCLA. Said playing for the dogs is a dream come true. And here he comes on second and eight. Bentley delivers on the edge. The dogs rally to the football after it is complete to Edwards. Nice job that time of Jake Bentley being patient. It was a cross dog blitz, meaning they crisscrossed the two inside linebackers. Nice job of picking up protection, but he also knew the middle of that field was vacated and found his favorite target, Brian Edwards, who he might look for again here, or the tight end, Hayden Hurst. These are the two guys Georgia needs to keep an eye on. And I think Kurt Roper's going to need to do more of this to keep that uh, offense on the field. 
Henley on the roll, on third and four, coming back to make a terrific grab. Or Trey Smith, just enough for the first down. My old coach used to say, I want great throws, not great catches. Jake Penley's lucky my coach wasn't talking to this, because this is a great catch by the freshman. His body control is outstanding. He's sitting down, giving him a target, making a catch. That's, that ball was a little low and outside. Bentley doing a nice job of letting Roquan Smith run past it, being patient to find that open window. Another key third down conversion. A.J. Turner coming off his career game against Pandy. Sophomore from Clifton, Virginia. What's interesting to me is that South Carolina's won three straight SEC games. They've averaged almost 40 rushes per game and almost 200 yards. They have found their run game. They battled injuries up front, but that was the 11th rush of this ball game. They've all but abandoned the run, and I think that's hurt them because it's put them disadvantaged. They're not doing what they said they wanted to do, which was come into this game and stay balanced. Bentley to throw again on second down. Now he's going to scramble. Bentley takes a pop as he rolls across the 40. Showing great, showing great maturity right there as a young quarterback. Nothing there. Get north and south. Get yourself into a third and manageable. And Aaron, I agree. You'd like to be able to run the ball, but ultimately you have to stay on the field. And if you're not being able to slug out three and four yard gains, the control passing game, because it gets out of his hands early, might be the more advantageous way to go. I agree with you, but the reason they were successful a week ago was because of how aggressive they were on first down taking shots down the field on third and six here comes the pressure Bentley fires and it is Smith intended receiver again it's incomplete Baker in coverage no flags Baker needs to be careful there he doesn't want to risk getting an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty but nice jobs being in phase Twisting his hips, Reed was coming over there to help, but the ball was thrown behind the receiver. Georgia, good tight coverage by Georgia there. Georgia was in a robber coverage, which allowed the outside defenders to play outside technique, knowing that they held help inside. Bentley had no place to throw that ball. Fake it. And here's a toss from Hurst on the fake punt. Flag is down. We, we got a hold. Georgia held that receiver going to get him out of jail. Will Muschamp's going to be pretty happy about that. He was really upset earlier in the game on the series before this, thinking that they got away with one. So the fake punt, they snap it to Hurst. His toss results in a flag. And here's the call. Holding against an eligible receiver, number 29 of the defense. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. And a grin on Will Muschamp's face. Well, relief on Will Muschamp's face. This is a do or die situation. You can't give Georgia a short field there. But you know what? You're trying to win a game against the number one team in the land. You got to take some chances. We're now in a position, fellas, where they're in four down territory. I promise you, Kurt Roper and, and Will Muschamp are in concert here saying, you know what? You got four downs. So Sky Moore, the intended receiver, defensive holding first down for Jake Bentley, the sophomore. Dad's on the staff. Mom Paulette, both brothers. And Check here play. comes another one, Hurst. It's going to toss it again. Hurst, it's incomplete. Baker breaks it up. Turner, the intended receiver. So Hurst has thrown it on the last two snaps for the Gamecocks. Well, we, heard, we knew he was a pitcher. This was a little high and outside. Maybe that's why he's no longer with the Pirates. <laughs> hey, look, you got to love this, this attack right now. They're being aggressive. They're saying, we're going to stay in this game. And most importantly, we're letting our defense get some rest. So it's a 2-0 count with Hurst. <laughs> in the Georgia defensive backfield. Shy Smith has the grab. Reed finally finishes it off. Gain of 22. If South Carolina is going to win this game, it's going to be because of Jake Bentley. He underthrows this ball, but it's a nice job of coming back by Smith. And just Aaron Davis, 35, kind of one of the glue players in that defensive backfield, overruns it. 
And here come the Gamecocks steadily marching down the field through the air. Aaron, I think he meant to underthrow it. There's another classic back shoulder. Youngsters, watch these two quarterbacks. They're teaching you something today. After the fake punt, South Carolina has it inside the Georgia 30. It's Turner on the edge, turns a corner inside the 20, wrestle down. Wow, watch or trace Smith come down. It takes a big man to want a crack block. To come down inside, you get somebody big and strong. Watch number 18 coming inside here and making this collision. This is South Carolina beating Georgia at its own game. This is the crack replace. Just a nice job of Turner showing you the speed. We talked about South Carolina getting away from the run game, but when it matters, they dial it up perfectly. More importantly, they execute it perfectly, and South Carolina is knocking on the end zone of the Bulldogs, trying to bring this game within one score. Last two plays, 37 yards. So now it's Mon Denson who's trying to slip away out of the tackle of Roquan Smith. Let's always, look let, always let the tailbacks run where they want to. It looked as if he ran outside the kickout block there. Today's Verizon Red Zone stats in South Carolina, one for one so far today. Touchdown on their first Red Zone trip. So when we talked to this coaching staff, they talked about Jake Bentley and his ability to be able to run the ball a week ago. Said, hey, we can't put him in harm's way, but when the game's on the line or in critical situations, we can use his legs. Watch them here. Turner in motion. Oh, hand off. Bentley straight ahead. Tough run from Mon Denson, the sophomore from LaGrange, Georgia. Saw his first action as a Gamecock last week. Third down. Five to go. Down inside the 10-yard line. Look for, look for some sort of a mesh in case they're in some form of man trying to get what we call rubs. Because picks are illegal, right, Aaron? <laughs> we get to try and look for some rub and a single receiver in the event that they give him. I like Edwards down here one-on-one. -on -one. No question. Edwards is six foot three. And you see him shake his head there. He liked that matchup. Timeout, South Carolina. It's 21-7 Georgia, but the Gamecocks have third and four out of this timeout. Mike and I are both on his recruiting visit to the University of Georgia. So Will was the hero of that time. Herbie ended up playing for the Bulldogs very well also. And now for the Georgia defense facing third and four for Muschamps, Gamecocks in the red zone. Well, you're looking for a one-on-one. Edwards is going to have a one-on-one -on -one down here. Remember, this is also a critical down. Kurt Roper is not afraid to use his quarterback's legs in a critical down, especially if he thinks he gets a fourth down. Bentley on the roll on third and four. Bentley fires, it's tipped and incomplete. Reed got a hand on it, a fist pump, fourth and four. And now the Gamecocks will send out the kicking unit with 3.39 to go in the third. I like this call. They absolutely were trying to do a rub route, but you see Reed gets that left hand on it. 18 Baker was coming over there. I like this call here. You have to end this very good drive positively, but remember, they talked about trick plays, so you got to expect the unexpected here if you're Georgia. 25-yarder miss from 46. They're playing extremely conservative, George is. And White boots it through <laughs> after the fake punt. Got the South Carolina drive alive. Parker White ends it with three. 21-10, Dogs. Mission presented by Sonic. We take you back to the historic 1980 meeting between these two schools, both in the top 15. Bold had Heisman Trophy winners. Herschel Walker took this one 76, 219 yards a couple of years before he won the Heisman. But George Rogers, that year's Heisman Trophy award winner with 168 rushing yards, but he lost the critical fumble and fourth rank Georgia won it. Last time they were 8-0, 2002. They started 9-0 in 82, lost that Sugar Bowl to Penn State. And then of course, 1980 going on to win the national championship. You know who they beat in that national championship, Aaron? No, I don't, Rick. Notre Dame. <laughs> 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 Rick took the same dig yesterday. <laughs>
I was trying to set him up. I didn't know you were going there. Oh, that'll be a touchback, Georgia at the 25. I want to look at that third down play again. And, and I'm, I'll bet you, fellas, that this is on the two-point plays on Kurt Roper's play chart. He's going on, and it really is a one-shot rifle. And the problem is because the blocking is all moving in that direction, too. You don't set an edge, and you hear J.R. Reed makes a great play, but you could see how close Lorenzo Carter was to making that same play. It's a one-shot rifle. I think they would have been better off, obviously, hindsight being 20-20, better off throwing just a fade. You needed an Athens double-barrel cannon, in fact, on that play. I see what you did there. Yeah. Deep dive. Chuck first down. Chuck, big hole on the left side across the 45. Wrestled down by D.J. Smith as he crosses the 50. Nick Chubb is a different running back this year. He's found some juice and some acceleration. There's an opportunity for him to get tackled right there, but because he's so powerful, he just runs through the big arms of Ulrich Jones. The power of 27 is back, and it's complemented by extreme acceleration, speed, and balance. The fourth big play of the day by this Georgia offense in the second rush. And now Crom will pull it. He's trying to find the edge. Crom slipping away from LeMond's. Banging into a couple of Gamecocks on the sideline. Guys, I've been really impressed with Jamarcus King, the corner for South Carolina. He just, nothing seems too panicky. You can see him right there holding the edge, knowing the sideline doesn't miss a tackle. He's not out there trying to make a play and giving up a huge chunk behind him. He just knows where he is all the time. He's a really good player, returning starter from a year ago. Got a lot of length, had seven tackles a week ago in their game against Vandy, Rick. You're right, seven complacent football. The true freshman undefeated as the Georgia quarterback under center. Chubb dropped as soon as he touches the football. And that was Keir Thomas, the sophomore from Miami, who blows it up. Tavares Robinson was adamant that Keir Thomas was going to have to play 50 to 60 plays today. He makes an unbelievable play getting off the block. And what we're seeing, exactly what we predicted, King is up and the face of the wide receiver you saw when the condensed split have how the safety got down low they are saying come on let's do battle when i was watching the vanny game five really popped he's an undersized but athletic and productive defensive lineman been a backup but i think he has started potential towards the end of this year on third and nine from pressure to game on the roll and he will dive. It's DJ Smith who finishes it off after Aaron Sterling, the true freshman from Atlanta's Tucker High School, gets the pressure. Here's what's interesting, right? We're here at the end of the third quarter. South Carolina has some mojo. Georgia hits a big play, but now they're forced to punt to give the ball back to South Carolina. We talked about at the beginning of the show the pressure of being number one with Georgia. South Carolina still feels like it has a chance to win this game. Let's keep an eye on Georgia to see if they start to play a little bit tight here. Isaac, grad transfer from Columbia, got his economics degree. Oh, Perfect. beautiful. Perfectly played. And it's Hardman who downs it at the one. Georgia special teams. Kirby Smart says that makes me proud. No. We look at the Dr. Pepper SEC conference standings. Georgia number one undefeated atop the East. They could clinch the East today. And of course, the number two team, Alabama, atop the West, taking on LSU tonight as part of our top-ranked doubleheader on CBS. First down, Bentley to throw from his own end zone, takes a deep shot, incomplete after the remarkable punt coverage by the Dolphins. Hey, how about this shot? We had uh, Billy Payne honored today at halftime. They pitch it down there at the one yard line. That, that looked like Sergio just spinning one in there on one of those par fives. Nicole Harbour went and got it. So with a minute left in the third, Gamecocks backed up because of the special team's execution by the Dogs. Bentley on the roll, finds Edwards. Davis makes the tackle. The fourth, third down, here comes a flag. 
Could be a big one. It was Davis on the stop, and this looks like Reed coming in late. After the play was over, personal foul, defense number 20. 15 yard penalty. These are the sort of things that start down. to haunt you. You look and say, now that's uncharacteristic. We've seen Georgia play so sound for so long this year. It's a little late, it's a little ticky tack, but certainly unnecessary. No yeah. need to add yourself to the pile there. And now you start playing a little bit tight. What's going on here? You had them pinned down. This was the goal to get past the 20 on a drive inside the five. They've already eclipsed that. Bentley's hot. This is, uh, this is a good recipe for the Gamecocks. Williams in the backfield. He takes it on first and 10. Has a hole on the right side. Diving to the 30. And I'll say this, that penalty gets compounded because when you chart it throughout the season, drives that start inside the five-yard line that don't end up getting a first down, on average, end up being three and a half points for the receiving team after you punt it away. Had Georgia been able to get that themselves off the field there, they would have had great field position. But they're playing hard, they're running around. It's all about how you finish, Rick, and we're about to go to the fourth quarter. You got an A in that math class. <laughs> <laughs> the Gamecocks' goal was to make it a one-score game going to the fourth. Not far off, 11-point game as we go to the fourth quarter in Athens. Let's take a look at the GMC Game Changer. Well, there were a couple early on in this game. Brian Edwards was first ruled an incomplete and went to review. It came back and was ruled a touchdown. Muschamp was happy. But Georgia did the same thing. Wims making a great catch on the sideline. Also reviewed. Also a touchdown. But, Rick, it doesn't matter how you start this game. What's going to matter is how both these teams finish it. Well, Ron Leatherwood, the uh, replay review guy, deserves to take a bow. He got both of those right. But this is a time when this Georgia leadership, the guys they called the glue, got to get everybody's attention and say, we want to be number one. Let's play like it right now. Williams in the backfield with Jake Bedley. Fake it, throw it. That's Hurst on the edge. Hurst wrestled down and dropped Reggie Carter, the 50-year senior on the stop. If you're watching this at home, you can say, hey, those guys are blocking outside, but that's legal because the ball was thrown behind the line of scrimmage. It's legal to be blocking down the field. It doesn't end up in much because Georgia does a nice job of knowing where their help is and turning it somebody can make a tackle. There were about eight red helmets around there, so it didn't matter how it was blocked. Georgia was running to the football. All four of those third down conversions for the Gamecocks have been huge. And now it's third and five. Bentley stands, it's knocked down again. Gavin Bellamy bats it away on third down. And back at your 30, forced to punt from here for South Carolina. Gavin Bellamy working over the right tackle. Zach Bailey, they got a little game on, but he times his jump beautifully. Defensive linemen are taught, if you're not making progress to the quarterback, get your hands up in the passing lanes. That's essentially a pass breakup right there. Speaking of glue, guys, was not that not the first guy that they brought to our attention? Yeah, we had a little bit of him in South Bend at the end of the game as well. I was going to say the clincher against Notre Dame is Charlton gets it away. Hardman, fair catch. Grabs it at the 32. Bulldogs with a football and a chance to run some clock in the board. Oh, it's time for our Geico game recap. As it has been all year, Georgia dominant in the run game. 186 rushing yards. Bentley has been clutch. That was the touchdown that was incomplete and then overturned for a TD. Out of the gun. From throwing it as well. 14 for 18. Zone, caught. Touchdown on the big third and four. It's from to me, Cole Hartman. I think I had it the first time. <laughs> so 21 10 now. Remember that, that drive for South Carolina started at its one. So they were able to get just a little bit of field position, not able to put the 99 yard drive together. But now with 14 08, Georgia gets the ball against the South Carolina D. Let's check in with John. 
example, earlier this week when we spoke to linebacker for South Carolina, T.J. Brunson, he told us that this is the kind of game this defense is made for in the fourth quarter where the, where the game is on the line. He said that's how we practice. We have this different situations where we, if the offense has the ball in practice, we can't let them get past the 35-yard line. Or if it's third down, we have to make sure they get off the field. I said, well, what happens if you fail in practice? He goes, well, we just have to run. So, guys, they don't want to run. They want to get this ball over to their offense. Fellas, this is what I used to call a gut check drive. On both sides of the ball right here. If you're Georgia, you've got an 11-point lead. A touchdown makes it a three-score game. You can almost punch out the lights in this thing, especially in front of a home crowd. If you're South Carolina, knowing you're down 11, you cannot afford to let them stay on the field. This is gut check and then some. Each team has one turnover. From quick hitter, big run ahead for Godwin. Boy, he, he was one. Making one man miss from going a long way. It's 16 as it stands for Godwin. Give Jim Chaney credit here. He's right on the inside. Wims, he was uncovered. That was a bust on the back end of South Carolina defensively or such soft coverage that Jake Fromm did a nice job of finding the open receiver and moving the chains. I think you're exactly right, Aaron. I think that was just an uncover. Fromm out of the gun. Fake it through, and they picked on the edge. I mean, almost. Rick, I, I know you played this position. We've seen some greediness out of both of these quarterbacks earlier in the game. Jake Fromm may be telegraphing receptions here. We complimented Jamarcus King. He's getting closer and closer to intercepting the football the further this game goes along. Almost liken it to that uh, a snake just biding his time. He, he jumped in that one with unbelievable quickness. I know he wants another chance to make the catch. So the response for George is to hit him with some double moves, some out and ups, and go. Gamecocks bring pressure on second and ten. Michelle fighting his way, pushing his way as we check in with Adam Zucker in New York. Carter, I want you to know this is a first half score, and this is why it's Bedlam, Justice Hill, scorching the Sooners to tie this thing at 38 in the first half. Part of that four-way tie atop the Big 12. Still 33 seconds left. Might be another touchdown. I'll let you know. Hey, why not? 33 seconds in the second <laughs> quarter. That's Bedlam! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. I tell, those two quarterbacks can flat play, just like these two right here. 31 points in this game in the fourth. Give it to Payne. Hand pushing, and he is close, close. If it works <laughs> once, do it again. Right. Fullback's the closest guy to the line of scrimmage. People, play callers love to give it to a fullback on third and short. He's the secret weapon. He hasn't touched the ball but five times all year. Two of those five carries were today and it's that offensive line that's getting it going and this is what you want to do we talk about in a situation like this in the fourth quarter it's not about plays it's about players it's a mindset this offensive line has led the charge all season long and if georgia wants to finish this game and the rest of the season they've got to rely on these guys up front they've looked pretty good on this drive so far here Clock down, handing off again. Chubb behind the big dogs, diving forward. Sky Moore makes a stop. Now, Aaron is an offensive line. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that you I feel like I'm being set up. enjoy a drive like this in the fourth. Well, we talk about two minute situations, right? Where you have a limited amount of time, you got to drive the field to try to get a score. The opposite of that is called four minute situation. And that's when you want to bleed the clock as much as possible retain possession of the football to keep the other offense off the, the field. You also allow your defense to run, and Georgia's doing that massively. This time, Michelle sheds the first defender. Michelle cuts it back and dives forward. Oh. And this is the benefit to having fresh backs. Sony Michelle could have 25, 30 carries today. Nick Chubb could have 25 to 30 carries today, but they probably go down on that play by Keir Thomas. In this case, because it's still fresh legs, as we like to say, he can make that play, and that's the ultimate advantage that Georgia enjoys this year. South Carolina's defense looks tired to me. They look tired to start this drive. Here, Thomas, great job penetrating, but he didn't finish. One of the things that Muschamp told us was a must, and this is where those body blows in the first half show up. And now it's Swift running behind the offensive line. Swift gets a few more. 
Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. You can see all the hands on the hips in those white jerseys. I promise you Jim Chaney's looking at that. They're sucking for a little get air. You can't blame them. They've been out there a long time, and this is where you can deliver the absolute body blow, Aaron. I know something you've done before in your life. And they got two tight ends on the field and one running back. Here comes 27. And it's Chubb. Gamecocks load up, drop him. Even with that short loss, George is over 200 rushing yards in the game again. They are averaging 284. T. Robb and Muschamp got him in third and seven. Great job by T. Robb and his defensive front as tired as they are, and I agree with you, Rick. They're doing a nice job of winning their matchup. There's been some plays throughout this game where that defensive line is starting to take so over, but you got to win here on third down. So much pride for Wanham, Jones, Sawyer. They're manning up in there. On third and seven, keep it on the ground. Michelle slipping outside on the 10, inside the 20. Sony Michelle picks off the first down, running it on third and seven. Having the ability to shake the defender in the hole is one of the things that Sony Michelle does such a good job of. Keep your eye at the bottom right of the screen. Montac, Stephen Montac, 22, has an opportunity to make this play. Boom. Now, there was a little bit of body presence there by Blazevich, but it was a nice job of Sony Michelle setting up that block, one of the country's best open field runners. Tenth play of the drive, only two passes. Michelle takes it again, pushing for another couple yards. Thomas on the stop. This is where uh, Kirby Smart's now going to be thinking about maybe being in four down because a touchdown here makes it a three-score game. If South Carolina can hold them to a field goal, they're still alive down only 14. So thinking Jim Cheney's wants to know right now from Kirby Smart, how many downs do I have? It will impact his play calls. Look like he's having fun. <laughs> what a handsome devil. Jim Cheney and I coached together against each other in the uh, 2001 Rose Bowl. Second and eight, fake the toss. Now go right back to it. Chubb on the edge. Chubb slips past Brunson. Chubb knocked out of bounds inside the five. Jones finally gets his hands on it. Fresh legs. <laughs> Fresh legs, boys. And that's the benefit. We just saw Sonny Michelle take a couple plays in a row. Then 27 comes in. He flipped three releases on the flare. And then it's just one on one in the open field. What? The acceleration pass, the defender changes the angle on him. Old 27 is completely recovered from those injuries earlier. He's got a burst and acceleration he didn't have a year ago. Setting up first and goal. Comes the zone. Tries to shake away, and then he's wrestled down D.J. Smith. D.J. Smith, who was taken into the locker room in the first half, returns and makes an unbelievable effort. This is what you love about college football, guys. This is how important it is to these kids. They want to play. They want to be there for their teammates. This guy comes out of the locker room after being shaken up in the first half and makes a remarkable play to keep George out of the end zone. He stayed home and set the edge. He condensed the formation. Fromm only had one carry a week ago for 13 yards that got a first down they went back to it here but South Carolina was ready second and goal toss out of the eye Chubb right side wrestle down Sky Moore drops him to voice third and goal let's check in with John you know, South Carolina defense did a great job there. Before they got on the field, they were calling out direct toss. They actually saw something in that Georgia formation, and they sniffed it out real quick. Great job by defensive coordinator there. Now John, the problem is, I mean, as we have pointed out on this drive, they're just flat getting worn out, including Sky Moore, who made that last tackle. Yeah, this is just nothing more than being on the field for a long time. They were close to 19 minutes on the field in the first half. 
South Carolina's offense did a nice job of evening things up in the third quarter. But uh, when you're on the field for this extended time and you're, these plays start mounting up and they keep running in a brand new tailback, that's hard, hard duty. You remember that old video game, Mike Tyson's punch out? Sure. Body blow, body blow, body blow. <laughs> that's what Georgia was doing in the first half. You see Sky Moore does a nice job scraping, but he's tackling a football player there now. You hope he's okay. Great recognition. He's battled his injuries. But I've been impressed, Rick. We talked about this game. So much heart on this South Carolina team. Absolutely. And I can believe that you were a big video guy. I had to go pull your, you guys out of that video room to get you back to doing homework. South, South Carolina's no glass Joe, though. I mean, they've yeah, no the ground here. So. Let, let me say this. This is, this is absolutely unbelievable to watch. The, the effort being exerted by both teams. This is a championship fight. Both are going toe to toe. This is what all these people came to see. They're being treated as our lead. Eldridge Thompson is in the middle for South Carolina now with Brunson out of the game. Third and goal. Watch Probably going one on one down here to Terry Godwin unless there's a rub play to the top. Watch Swift as a receiver. There's Fogg tossing. There's the fade intended for Godwin. It is incomplete. And Fourth and goal, that's LeMond's in coverage, forcing Georgia to kick the field goal. Yeah, the, the throw signaled that uh, Kirby had decided he was going to kick the field goal and get it to 14 uh, before calling that play. Had they been in four down, that would have been a run. And it was an all-or-nothing situation, and Fromm, a true freshman, making the good decision and throwing it away, giving his team the opportunity to kick the field goal here. Very good complimentary football all day long by Georgia. Rodrigo Blankenship boots it through. So it is a 24 to 10 game now in dark for South Carolina. I won't get one wings of the best. Seven was on the sideline. 24 to 10 with the dogs number one again. Tonight on CBS Sports Network, Colorado State. Mike Bobo's Colorado State Rams facing Josh Allen and Wyoming in a critical Mountain West showdown. That's 7 Eastern on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Breakthrough season for Mike Bobo and Colorado State. Colorado State still alive in that Mountain West, having a great year. A lot of people talking about Mike Bobo maybe coming back closer home uh, as jobs open up in the Southeastern Conference. We'll wait and see about that. But right here, you know, you're down 14 points for South Carolina. This is where you're going to have to begin clock drives. It, it's a two-minute offense now, so you cannot waste all that 636 getting one touchdown. You've got to save some time to get the ball back. Finn brings it out. He's dropped. Payne who makes the stop. He's been solid as a fullback and now solid in special teams. So uh, th this is what you told us was going to happen to upset number one. Well, we see the 40% on third down. They did a nice job there. Uh, Would have liked to have had another turnover or two. Didn't get that done. And they, they were behind in the fourth quarter by two scores. That makes it more difficult because there's not as much nervous energy in the stadium that the team can feed off of. Let's watch two-minute offense here. Bentley with Williams in the backfield. Rolling, pressured into the end zone. Now Bentley's going to heave it. And it's caught. Hurst holds it in. Almost wow. a safety. Instead, it's Hurst with another huge conversion. That is big time football credit. Jake Bentley for keeping that play alive. And Georgia's defensive front got to the quarterback but didn't finish. Bentley throwing again, first and ten. That's on the edge, and that is... Let's see. They're giving the catch. Jai Smith. That's a grab. So keep it rolling with six minutes. Plenty of time. They're going to look at it. Yeah. They're going on the field with a catch. Previous play is under review. The receivers have loved Ron Leatherwood so far. We'll see if the love affair continues. <laughs> He's been good to him. But how about these young receivers for South Carolina? I've been impressed with them watching them on film. Good protection this time. It wasn't a couple plays before that. Hard to see from that angle. He certainly works to have his hands underneath. 
but we can't see definitively there whether or not that ball touched the ground or not on that last look. You know what I love is the fundamental of showing it to the, re the uh, referee. We used to teach that all the time, no matter what. Show it to the referee as if you made that great catch to try to get the call. Now, it's not so easy anymore with the benefit of replay, but it may get you an opportunity to get up to the line and get a ball snap before it can be absolutely judged. Now, the difference may be, I mean, it's cold to catch on the field. I don't see anything yeah. conclusive there. You don't see the bounce. If, if, I had, if I had to guess, that would not be a catch. But remember, there's got to be definitive evidence that's indisputable that contradicts the play on the field. I think this is going to end up standing because there's nothing that shows that this ball hit the ground. If there's a negative to this for South Carolina, regardless of the outcome of the replay, it's allowing Georgia's pass rush to catch some air. They're going to have an opportunity to put what Mel Tucker calls the rabbits group in there, which are guys that are going to get to the pocket. They have some big work in the bye week, Aaron, about the pass rush, making sure the outside rushers didn't run past the quarterback, making sure the inside pressure pushed the pocket, not giving uh, Bentley any escape routes. He got out of trouble that, at first play, and you could see the pass rush wear down. We'll wait and see what the ruling is here, but they're going to have a fresh pass rush coming back. This stoppage, who does it help more, South Carolina or Georgia? There's no question. I think it helps Georgia for what Rick just said, is that it allows them to catch their breath. Remember, this pass rush for Georgia came alive a week ago against Florida when they had five sacks. They almost started this drive here with a sack and potentially a safety, but they didn't finish. They're pretty fresh After defensively. Review, really on the field stand. It's second down. As we thought, but now they're rested, and now it's time to play some football again. And South Carolina's got to keep going, get that tempo, get some momentum back. But Georgia's rested, which should help them. There's always a tendency to want to take big shots, make big plays, get points back immediately. The higher percentage plays are where you need to stay right here, what we call control throws. Let's see if Coach Roper thinks the same way. Sense of urgency, but not panic. Bentley. That's Williams out of the backfield. Williams dives forward, third and short. Harris should spend down the stop here. You're not going to punt. This is a situation where you have to get to a rhythm, have a cadence. Interesting to see how aggressive Georgia and Mel Tucker are going to be. Well, he snaps it. This is Williams. Williams missed the hole, and he's dropped for a loss. Fourth down coming. Sanders finally finishes it off. Fourth down for South Carolina. And that's the function of a fresh defense for Georgia winning at the point of attack. I didn't like that play call, though, Rick. Let's watch for Bentley's legs here, guys. Critical down. Add the extra component to the run game. Bentley to throw on fourth down. It is knocked away. Incomplete. Intended for Smith. And Baker knocks it away on fourth down. The Gamecocks elect to throw it on fourth and two. Well, you, you mentioned it. DeAndre Baker, they were up in their, their grills. They were going to be really aggressive. If they, get a, if they get a penalty, so be it. They were, great play by number 18. 452, Georgia ball with a two touchdown lead. So, and the defense firing on all cylinders once again. On the chub on first down with less than five to go on a two touchdown lead. If this can hold on, if Kirby Smart can get to the locker room with a win, he's going to be really proud of this football team given all the distraction, quote unquote, distraction of the week of being number one. Coming into a second half where the game was still in question and then responding. Even though you've got a little blood on your lip, responding and the way they responded. That seven minute drive, it resulted in only a field goal, but it was still a seven minute and 31 second drive. That's what championships teams can do when they're faced with that sort of uh, situation. Credit Georgia and obviously the fourth down stop right there. A great team effort thus far. Now they got to finish. Pretty much tells the story of the game. 229 to 44. Bomb gives to Chubb again, the dominant Georgia ground game. You know, Sony Michelle said, practices are so hard, we don't get to enjoy wins, much less being number one. <laughs> Who does that 
sound like. Oh, man. It, it's it's a carbon copy, really, for both of these programs, Rick. I know as both of us were watching tape and talking to the coaches and doing research, there's so many similarities in so many ways <laughs> from both of these teams. It's ridiculous. Well, the two coaches are twin sons of different mothers. <laughs> I mean, they both went to Georgia. They both played in the secondary. They both uh, coached for Nick Saban. They both were the coordinator for Nick Saban. They know each other inside and out. To see a throw from Fromm here. Let's see how conservative they choose to be. On third and six, here's the toss. Michelle picked it up on third and seven, wow. and now barreling through the Gamecocks. He's going to be short of the first down, but another tough run, keeping it on the ground. There's going to be a consideration to go for it here. That's what I'm down. saying. Yep. yep. Because think about how aggressively they started this game with an onside kick. This would be an aggressive play call, but at this down and distance. Two scores up. They may call time. South Carolina might have should have used a timeout here. The fact that they didn't early probably allows them not to here. So Georgia gets to bleed a little more clock. And now fourth and four. Before. Looking oh, to boy. see if they could get him jump. Out. Looking to see South if they Carolina. could get him to jump. Second time out of the half. Mm. So South Carolina eventually uses the timeout. But Georgia runs the clock down to 241. Fourth and four. Come on. Bigger doesn't. Coming up after our game, stay tuned for the CBS Sports Post Game Show, powered by Ram. South Carolina uses the timeout, but after Georgia runs the clock down. 31 seconds ticked away. There was some confusion there. I don't know why South Carolina, if they were going to call the timeout, didn't call it early. Yeah, Will will grade himself down there. You know, both these guys are great situational uh, coaches. They learned that from Nick Saban. Uh, he'll grade himself down there. But the punting unit is out for Georgia. So prior to the timeout, the Bulldogs looked like they were going to go for it on fourth down. But now, Nizalek and the Bulldog punting unit, which has been perfect today. Nizalek hits it. Sam Harmon gets a chance to down it again. This one into the end zone touchback. So 233, one timeout, down by two touchdowns. It would uh, take, <laughs> take a minor here, miracle at this point. Right. If you're manufacturing your drive for Jake Bentley, you're going to say, we need to score in a minute 33. We want to leave a minute left to have an onside kick, get the ball back, and then be able to move it down in the field so we can get that score to tie the game. Ultimately, you've got to work within the parameters of 133 and work also with the idea of trying not to use your timeout. And the worst thing you can do as a quarterback in a situation like this is give up a sack because you lose both yardage and time. You only have one timeout. Offensive line makes the play here. Bentley, they started off with a pass to Turner. Open field, dropped down at the 25. The South Carolina defense did its job. They got their first three and out of the game from Georgia to get it back to the offense. I think you have to rush for, try to get to the quarterback. I think if you're South Carolina, take some deep shots, but always have an outlet for Bentley. Bentley over the middle. Hurst goes up to get it. Those are the kind of throws you're looking for now. You can't throw, afford throwing balls underneath the chains that keep the clock going. You want to stop the clock with first down. Great job by Hurst going up there and high pointing that football. Bentley pumps, rolls, tosses it to the sideline. Minute 58 left on the clock. Lorenzo Carter got the pressure. Smart little change up there by Mel Tucker, rushing three. Dropping more into coverage. Again, these are 19-year-old quarterbacks. They haven't seen everything. So all of a sudden, when an unidentified UFO kind of guy is running around out there, wait a minute, he's not supposed to be there. You end up getting him to throw it away. Absolutely right. When you're expecting pressure and you only rush three and drop eight, the picture changes on the quarterback, which slows his reads down, which allows the pressure to get there, which is why he had to pull it down and throw it away. Quick hitter to the outside is incomplete. Bringing up third down intended for Edwards. Then at 55. Almost better it was incomplete for South Carolina. That ball would have been probably third down and eight, and the clock would still be running. Again, in this situation, knowing that you need two touchdowns, you can't afford to have that clock continuing. Here, you got to throw past the chains. Bentley has been masterful all afternoon long on third down. He's got to be at his best and pull the best rabbit out of the hat here. Third and ten. Third to the outside. It is picked off. Intercepted 
Malcolm Parrish with the interception. And with a minute 49, the Bulldogs have all but sealed 9 and 0. They didn't celebrate on Tuesday night when they got to number one, but you can bet the dogs will celebrate this one. The spikes, the pads. Yep, indeed. Savage. Malcolm Paris gets the key pick, and now with a minute 49, South Carolina has only one chance to stop the clock left. Uh, Bentley and the Gamecocks fought and fought. Uh, two score game right now if it holds that would be the second closest game that georgia has played this year the other the comfort behind win at south bend so the gamecocks give them a test but georgia has a chance to run it out and go to nine and all will muschamp using his last time out like a true competitor and listen we love the way south carolina played today it was valiant i can't wait to get there next week and watch him play at florida gators in columbia 24 10 last Time out for Muschamp. DirecTV has been rated no. Georgia may get that chance against Bama and Atlanta. And who knows, there might be two chances against Bama and Atlanta. So Georgia has made the opening statement as part of our top-ranked doubleheader. And now Bama versus LSU coming up on CBS. Georgia's a legit football team, but so is Alabama. So good in all three phases. That's the matchup that we all want to see. Really impressed by what we've seen from Georgia so far here tonight. Run in hard again. In fact, it runs over the umpire. Hope he's all right. <laughs> Nick Chubb. Hey, sportsmanship. Uh -oh. And that's it. They We're can take a knee. Hopefully and, and Wally listen, Hupp's okay there. Fellas, for Kirby Smart, I mean, he loves winning 42-7, to 45-7. to 7. Those kind of games are fun for a coach. You get to empty your bench. But in terms of playing for the big prizes, to know that your team can withstand this. Now, they were at South Bend, and they had that kind of experience. But to do it at home, especially with the burden of being number one, stamp Georgia as authentic. One of the last things I asked Kirby Smart yesterday in our meetings is, how would you describe this team without hesitation? He said, grit. We're a tough team. We're gritty. And that's exactly what they came out here today and did. I think that this team is legit, and we all have our fingers crossed that number one meets number two in Atlanta for the showdown I think we've all been waiting for. November 8, 1982. The Dogs went to 9-0 and and number one in the AP poll. Won the SEC, Herschel's last year in Athens. They lost to Penn State in the Sugar Bowl. But SEC champs and a chance to play for the national title. And now for the first time since 1982, 9-0. And the number one Georgia Bulldogs take care of South Carolina, 24 to 10. And the two Bulldogs safeties meet, shake hands, and a hard-fought game that Georgia wins 24 to 10. Outstanding performance. Jake Fromm fell 16 to 22 for 196 and two touchdowns. You start great championship football teams with a quarterback, Georgia's got him one. And I was impressed by South Carolina. I'll see your Jake Fromm and raise you a Jake Bentley. 21 for 35, 227 yards, did have two interceptions, but they played gritty and tough all game long. Looking forward to seeing them next week. And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. 24 to 10. And this was Fromm with his second TD pass of the day. Hardman holds it in. Another remarkable grab in the end zone for a Bulldog wide receiver. Jake Fromm, the Picasso of back shoulder throws, Carter. Mm. <laughs> and still undefeated as a Georgia Bulldog, the true freshman. Nine and over the team. And he got that first win in their second game at South Bend. So for Aaron Taylor, Rick Neuheisel, our producer Scott Brandwine, our director Mark Grant, and John Schriffen. I'm Carter Blackburn saying so long from Athens, Georgia. The college football post game show powered by Ram is up next after these messages.